So we're finally talking about the Glacial Moon build. Uh, what the hell is the Glacial Moon build? I haven't officially covered this or formally covered this, but it's in most of my videos. So if you just like watch some of my playthroughs or some of the guides or some of the general videos, you'll just kind of see Corentin popping off, just nuking everything to hell. So here is the main, here are the main components of this team comp. Um, these are, these can be slotted in uh, I'll go over which ones are most like are absolutely necessary and which are nice to have. So the actual build is these three units. And then Flanagan is good because he just hangs out with Corentin and just maintains 50% damage reduction on him. So if any enemy gets close, it doesn't matter. He's just too tanky to kill. So the idea is you spam Glacial Moon with two batteries. It does really good damage. You put Corentin on ice and every turn he gets two TP and with some battery he can easily hit 4 TP every turn. So let's just begin. Obviously I'm not running all the units on this map. Like I'm, it's, I'm 8 units short. I'm just showing this particular build. And this can be slotted into any team. You don't need Flanagan. But it's really nice to have. Because he can make all of your team tanky. Or not all of them. But like all the units near him tanky. So he can make your entire back line very tanky. So assuming your back line consists of 4 units. He himself is tanky, he makes them tanky. It's great. So what is the upside of this build? Why should you use this build? Uh, it has extremely good damage. Uh, some of the best, most consistent AoE damage in the game. It's very easy to pull off. And it's free. Uh, assuming you're, like, I mean, you can spam Medina stuff, and, and that way it's not free. But it's generally, it's as free as it can be, so. <laughs> For end game craziness. So we're going to do this. Uh, Medina will just hang out here for now. We're gonna rotate Flanagan soon. Actually, I probably should have double items to give to, uh, or to give Corentin ice tile, but we'll we'll get to that. All right, so we're going to Glacial Moon. This is the main thing you're spamming. Why spam Glacial Moon? Um, I have a few. <laughs> I, have a, I have a few opinions on this ability. See, these are level fifty enemies, right? They're all about to lose, like... Look at how much damage it does, dude. Like, that's all you need to say. Why should you spam Glacial Moon? It is the best, most consistent AoE, like, spell. Honestly, best consistent AoE skill in the game. And then we use... You can optionally run Flanagan for Rampart spam. Now both Julio and Crinton take reduced uh, damage. I do need a personal uh, tank... Saranoa on Flanagan so that he can tank mages, but that's the only thing this is missing right now. Alright, so Julio can just straight up give... <laughs> he can just, like, finish them. Uh, so Crimson will be at 4 TP to Glacial Moon again. And then Medina can run in. Uh, she can double items. So what she'll do... Uh, she'll spike heal Flanagan. And then she will use... Just an ice... Just like a ranged ice stone here. Actually, probably here. So that any enemies, or at least here, any enemies that are trying to melee Corentin will have reduced accuracy. So now Corentin gets 2 TP a turn. This battle mage might kill Flanagan. Okay, it looks like he got stuck, so that's good. But you can see the AoE is ridiculous. This, this ability has absurd range. It does really good damage. It's really easy to maintain. Look at how much damage this is. This is ridiculous. This is like meme, this is like meme levels of damage. Uh, one thing I can do here is I can just, you can, and if you want to accelerate the damage, you can battle cry in tandem. So that's three uh, quietest points to just accelerate the nuking. And then I can just have uh, Flanagan heal himself in this case. He can just use, he can just use this on himself. Look at this, this is ridiculous. This is one unit's damage. This is one unit. This is the best AoE ability in the game, period. There is a reason why you'll constantly see me running this. Because it's so good. He just killed multiple things. And then he's going to take 50% less damage. And then Julio can keep... Um, I'll, I'll, have, I'll inherit her in this case, but look at this. He's already back to full. He's already back to full. And then I can fast act the medication... If I want to. I don't have to, but I can. <laughs> it's like the ultimate flex build. Um, so I can start nuking these. 
because they're trying to kill me, so let's try to prevent that from happening. Uh, but you, yeah, you can see the damage. It's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> it's pretty much why you should use those. Uh, Flanagan might die potentially. We'll see. He needs he needs Sereno to tank him. All right, what we can do is this. There we go. Heal everyone. And this is with four units that we're accomplishing this. And then uh, Crinton will actually be at three TP. Uh, so if I actually just do this, and then Moment of Truth in. Let me check the turn order before I do anything. Let's see, turn order. All right, so what I'll do is I'll restore Crinton so he won't die. All right, and then we'll Moment of Truth him. So he can Glacial Moon again with damage boost. Pretty standard stuff. This guy's dead. He just doomed himself by doing that. He's just killed himself. Uh, we can even fast acting medication, but I'll just have her use a, a heal. Just to keep everyone healthy. There we go. <laughs> Crinton's just straight up carrying damage here. It's hard to compete with this, to be honest. Like, Crinton's the be probably the best damage dealer in the game, period. Um, it's hard to say that anything's even close to him. Uh, this, this amount of damage and shutdown, because he's also putting ice tiles on the ground and reducing enemy movement and accuracy, is so absurd. It's just, like, so good. Alright, so we still have... Alright, we, we have to Ramparts again. But this level of shutdown, or this level of damage is ridiculous, to be honest. Like, there's very little the enemies can do to us. Uh, I can keep double item spamming. Just, just keep spike healing everything. <laughs> Alright, and in this case, um, I can just moment of truth and move back. Or I can't, or yeah, I can move back. Yeah, we can do this. So now he has, he'll have 5 TP again. <laughs> this dude will stab him, that's fine. This guy's gonna stab him, whatever. We can put shielding stance on him to quarter his damage, but some of these are gonna die straight up right here. Another one's dead. <laughs> they just, they're just like dying like nothing. But yeah, this, this is the power of Glacial Moon. This is why you should use it. This is why Crinton is S tier. Anyone who tells you otherwise... Dang, that almost killed... <laughs> What's his face? Anyone who tells you otherwise doesn't understand the game, to be honest. Um, Alright, so we have three turns of spam. Uh, Medina can fast acting medication, so he, uh, he'll just heal. Flanagan will just heal everyone for some chip healing. I do have to kill that mage. That mage is annoying. The mage is really screwing this up, but... Uh, yeah, fast acting medication. Corinton. Oh, wait, Corinton can't... Um, I guess we can do this. Give him light battery. Oh, wait, no, he can. We can use finish them. Giving him two, and then he's at five again. This horse guy will stab. And then he will die with a nuke. Look at this. Look at how ridiculous this is. This is four units. <laughs> and, and no Avalor. <laughs> this is just like part of the death ball comp, essentially. Uh, with Julio added. But like really you just need Medina, Julio, and uh, Corentin. You can run Flanagan if you expect him to be getting hit. Like, if you're, like, overwhelmed with enemy density, then you can use him in this way. Uh, but the cool thing about um, Flanagan is if you also shielding stance Corentin, he takes quarter damage. So, now he'll take half damage and half damage again, making him extremely tanky. And then with Medina, you can double item spam heal everything. While restoring TP in huge amounts. Julio has damage reduction from his, um, what is it, his uh, passive. Uh, in this case, he actually can just straight up smack a thing for some damage to help put it at, like, one shot range. Yeah, and Crinton's at five again. Uh, we do want to kill that mage. That's probably a priority here. We want to get rid of that mage. It's just going to keep nuking. Oh, it's still alive. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Of course it is. It has like 10 health. <laughs> we want to kill that mage because Flanagan's under pressure from it. Flanagan's extremely tanky outside of magic, but because I don't have a rest, the rest of my team here, uh, he's not as tanky as he should be. 
So, all right, then we got Medina. Uh, one thing we can do, if I fast acting medication, oh no, we did kill the mage. Never mind. All right, we can just we can just use a single. We can just do this. Just give everyone TP. Yeah, and then Flanagan. He needs to rampart again. Now that it's all physical units, we're extremely tanky as a team. Uh, Julio has 25% damage reduction plus the 50 from ramparts. Uh, he could straight up kill this probably. He'll just smack it though. Alright, these guys are flying in. But this is the power of Glacial Moon. Corinton has been doing like, like I don't know, 99% of the damage. Maybe it's like 95, but still. He's been... Look at this. It's so easy to spam. It's like, it's so much better than high jump too. Like I know... Uh, some people like high jump, but this is just so much better. It's it's zero risk. You can do it from any position. You don't have to physically put the unit in there. You hit more targets. You hit one more target. Um, it's cheaper. It costs four TP. The the unit that's on self generates TP every turn. Uh, with like Medina double item spam, it's like an infinite combo. Like I I don't have to do double item spam, but I can. Like that's how good it is. It's like you can just keep doing this. You get heal plus battery off, and then you just keep nuking. And then you can have, um... Like, I don't even need to do anything here. I can just smack this. I can just kill this. Give him... Keep his TP at, at uh, 5. And then Flanagan can actually do, like, utility things, but he'll just maintain shielding stance on Corentin. That's why I included him in this video, to show the value Flanagan adds to a team. Because Corentin can die very fast, but... Um, I don't think it's useful to analyze units in a vacuum, like, by themselves. I think it's useful to look at units as, like, in terms of how they function on a team. So, like, it's a very little use. Yeah, check this out. This will actually kill. It's a very little use to analyze units by themselves because ultimately they will be on a team. So it doesn't really make sense to analyze things in a vacuum. Like, how good is this unit you know, <laughs> by itself. It's like, that's not how it's going to be used, so it's not really going to give you good input or good information as to how it'll, how effective it is, right? Because I know there's, like, a tendency uh, for any, and even, like, most tier lists, like, even in, like, Fire Emblem games, where it's, like, how good is this unit by itself? And it's like, that, that can be useful. I'm not saying that it's not. It's never useful, but I would say in general... For this game, how the unit performs in a team and like how it can complement other units is what creates the meta game. Because that's how Guild Wars works. If you've ever played Guild Wars One, Guild Wars One doesn't care about how good. What we might as well do here is this. It doesn't care about um, how good something is individually. It cares about how good it is within the context of a certain team comp. So in Guild Wars One, it's all about like class like your builds between your units working together and this is a perfect example of that where you have a tank making other units tanky you have your battery healing and then you also have another dude battering like a secondary battery now you can just straight up run Corentin and medina and as long as she always is next to him when she double items she can double items every single turn and then he can spam glacial moon without julio so the three configurations are just Corentin, medina uh Corentin, medina and julio and then Corentin, medina and flanagan and you run the Flanagan for the extra tanking. And they're all good. Like, all of these configurations are fine. Um, so, you can kind of get a feel for... What you need... What situ like, what setup you need for what sh situation. If it's, like, low unit count, like, n a team of nine, these are all good units to run in general. So, there's really no downside of using them. But it's an extremely powerful spell... Like, it's just, it's just the best AoE spell in the game. Like, there's nothing, there's really not much else to say about it from that, aside from that. Uh, but I, I feel like, you know, showing it is useful. I could talk about how good Glacial Moon is, but this is, like, the perfect use case. Like, this is, a, these are all level 50 enemies, and this team of four is completely locking this down easily. <laughs> this is ridiculous, to be honest. So, and this is with, I mean, obviously you're using the items from Medina, but... Yeah. Glacial Moon's ridiculous, so... And then, of course, once Corentin has high TP, uh, he can be batteried, too. So, for example, in this case, I can do, like, finish them. 
And finish them is good to use on Julio. If the, you, like, Crenton's already going to get two TP. So you spend three TP to give him two. It's better than spending five to give him five because he's getting more than he can even take. And, like, now he just loses a 10% damage reduction. Because at least with two TP on Julio, I still have 10% damage reduction. Now, however, if I just do this, now he's at 15% damage reduction. So having two batteries is extremely overpowering. <laughs> All right, here we go. Scazzy so an attack. Great. He hawk dived with an actual hawk. That's cool. Um, the other thing, too, is I don't actually have to Glacial Moon here. I uh, should be able to Icy Tomb both of these for Spike, which actually hits harder. So what you can do to conserve even more TP is Glacial Moon and then Icy Tomb. So you're spending three, uh, four, or, yeah, 4 TP and then 3 TP. And Icy Tomb has a wider area of effect than Glacial Moon, but it's centered around you. So if you're Glacial Mooning the entire board, and there's like a ton of enemies in range, and then you just start Icy Tombing them, you'll actually deal absurd damage to even like to more targets for, for less, assuming they're on Icy Tiles, which they probably will be. So, some things to consider. Uh, he's basically more or less safe here, so he might as well just Shielding Stance Corentin. Alright, then Julio. He doesn't need to give Corentin anything, because he can Glacial Moon this turn. So he can just smack this for some damage. And then Medina, she can just double items, spike heal everyone. And then secondary heal. Now everyone's at like max TP again, essentially. Crinton's gonna be at 5, so. And also note, when he's at 5 TP. Oh, that's how we lose? Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, when he's at 5 TP, he can Glacial Moon and then Icy Tomb combo. If he's on an ice tile, because the way it works is you're at 5 TP, you cast Glacial Moon, you're at 1 TP. It's your next turn, natural regen of 1. Uh, on ice regen of 1, you're back at 3, you can now Icy Tomb. So even without a battery, like he doesn't have to catch battery every single turn. He just needs to catch battery every other turn. As long as he does that, he can Glacial Moon, Icy Tomb combo. If he catches battery every turn, he can Glacial Moon, Glacial Moon combo and just keep spamming it. And it's extremely powerful. So yeah, that's it for this one. Uh, definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I still have a lot of hard mode guides for like Deathless, Fresh Save to go through. Um, honestly, those take me a lot longer to make than other videos because I have to actually like like play test a bunch of different builds before uploading them. Uh, and then make sure like the build actually works or like the, the strategy actually works. So th that's why those take longer if you're wondering. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in the next video.